The F-22 Raptor was meant to be the ultimate air superiority fighter, the most lethal aircraft ever built, a technological marvel that redefined warfare itself, but for America's closest allies, absolutely untouchable. Not expensive, not restricted, banned. It seems like an easy answer, protecting military secrets. But the truth, it isn't that simple. So, why did America refuse to sell the F-22 to nations that have bled alongside it for decades? And what does that reveal about the brutal reality of technological dominance in 2025? The story involves broken promises to America's closest friends, a technological gamble that backfired spectacularly, and a decision that may have fractured Western air power just when unity matters most. During initial testing in 1997, test pilot Paul Metz achieved something unprecedented, pushing the F-22 past Mach 1 without afterburners in a capability called supercruise. No visible flames, no massive fuel burn, just efficient supersonic flight that demonstrated a major technological advancement. This wasn't an incremental improvement. This was a generational leap that established clear superiority over existing fighters. The F-22 featured advanced stealth technology that significantly reduced radar detection. Its maneuverability exceeded previous aircraft capabilities. The sensor fusion system provided pilots with unprecedented situational awareness. But with revolutionary capability came strict security measures. After the Cold War's end, many in Washington questioned the need for hundreds of these expensive fighters against a diminished threat landscape making production caps and export restrictions politically palatable. What they didn't anticipate was how desperately America's allies would want this technology as new threats emerged. Six months later, U.S. Democratic Party Congressman David Obey from Wisconsin included 29 words in a defense bill. None of the funds made available in this act may be used to approve or license the sale of F-22 advanced tactical fighters to any foreign government. Congress collectively approved the language. Export was now impossible. Every Allied request would be denied with this single legislative change. America had developed fighter technology decades ahead of competitors. Unlike previous advances, this capability carried secrets considered too sensitive to share. As one Air Force general explained, once those technologies are released, controlling their spread becomes impossible. But what happens when your closest allies, nations that have fought and died alongside you, come knocking with blank checks and compelling strategic needs? Japan, facing China's military modernization, identified the F-22 as essential for national defense. Their proposal extended beyond standard aircraft purchases. Japan offered to fund export variant development, establish domestic production lines, and accept modified versions with restricted systems. Japanese officials indicated willingness to meet any American terms for access. Japan sought the F-22 specifically to counter China's expanding air power, including advanced fighters such as the stealth fighter J-20 and missile systems. Australia viewed it as essential against Chinese anti-access area denial A-2AD strategies in the Pacific, while Israel aimed for air dominance in the Middle East amid regional threats. Australia formally declared the Raptor their preferred choice in their 2009 defense white paper. Israeli officials pursued every available diplomatic channel for access. Each nation presented compelling strategic rationales and offered substantial financial commitments. These weren't unprecedented partnerships. America's most trusted allies were offering significant resources to address legitimate security threats, backed by proven records protecting classified technologies. For nations that had fought and died alongside American forces, the rejection felt like a fundamental betrayal of decades-old partnerships. The consistent American response remained unchanged. No exceptions would be made. For the first time in decades, alliance status proved insufficient. Technology sharing had clear boundaries, ending at the F-22's classified systems, a trust ceiling that even blood alliances couldn't breach. But America wasn't about to leave its allies empty-handed. The solution they offered would reshape global air power, though not in the way anyone expected. After years of rejections, America offered the F-35 Lightning II. 
The F-35 was designed from inception as an exportable fighter. Its systems used modular architecture with compartmentalized technologies, allowing different access levels for different allies. The F-35 also operates on a global supply chain, so each nation and many a U.S. congressional district contributes parts to each and every flying F-35, securing the program's success via inclusive investment based on competitions for cost control and quality. The aircraft offered stealth capabilities, advanced sensors, and international interoperability. Allied pilots train together, share operational data, and utilize common maintenance networks. But here's what allies were really getting, compared to what they wanted. The F-22 featured supercruise for sustained supersonic flight without afterburners, superior stealth shaping, and thrust vectoring for advanced agility. In contrast, their F-35 lacked supercruise and was designed more for multi-role strike missions than pure air superiority. The difference was stark. The F-22 was built to dominate the skies against any adversary, while the F-35 was built to be a multi-role workhorse, versatile but not an air-dominant specialist. We would have preferred the F-22, but the F-35 is available, one Japanese official stated privately. The Lightning represented significant capability, though not the air superiority specialization allies originally sought. By establishing the F-35 as the international standard, America created a global ecosystem where allies operated similar aircraft while the US maintained exclusive access to the most advanced air superiority platform. Allies received genuine fifth-generation capability. America retained the decisive advantage. Nations that offered substantial payments for Raptors became participants in a program requiring ongoing dependence on American parts, training, and upgrade systems. Beyond secrecy, the ban helped safeguard the F-35 program's international success by preventing F-22 exports from competing for sales, and funding U.S. defense contractors benefited from positioning the F-35 as the export-friendly option, ensuring broader adoption and revenue. It seemed like the perfect strategy. America kept its ultimate weapon, while allies got advanced capability, partially based on the F-22's successes. But this carefully crafted plan was about to unravel in ways no one saw coming. Though the F-22 itself was never exported, elements of its technology influenced the F-35, which was shared with allies. Rivals like China access stealth design insights through espionage on the F-35 program, undercutting US efforts to protect advantages. The F-22 ban became a development catalyst for allied competitor nations. European nations and Japan would partner on developing future fighter jets with programs like Tempest and FCAS. Also, China increased resources for the J-20 program, demonstrating capability development without requiring stolen technologies. Russia's Su-57 emerged from similar determination to achieve technological independence. The irony was inescapable. While America's closest allies were locked out from the F-22 Raptor, Chinese cyber espionage against F-35 contractors still stole critical fifth-generation fighter aircraft stealth and avionics data generated by the United States. The economic impact was staggering. So too was the impact of future F-22 development. Every denied F-22 sale to an ally also represented lost revenue that could have sustained production lines. When the program concluded early, critical manufacturing knowledge was lost. Later Pentagon consideration of production restart revealed a significant challenge. The specialized expertise no longer existed, making costs prohibitive. Japan now pursues indigenous stealth fighter development, directly resulting from F-22 access denial. Australia's Air Force operates without the air superiority advantage Raptors would have provided in Pacific operations. The F-22 production was capped at just 187 jets, far below the Air Force's original request, with each aircraft costing over $150 million, making it a target for congressional scrutiny. Exports could have extended the production line and preserved manufacturing expertise, but the ban led to an early shutdown, weakening long-term U.S. fleet sustainment and future development of the F-22 Raptor. In an era of hypersonic weapons and artificial intelligence integration, exclusive technological advantages face shortened lifespans as global innovation accelerates. The question that haunted Pentagon planners had America's obsession with secrecy actually weakened the very air superiority and alliances it was meant to protect. 
The F-22 export ban reveals three critical lessons about military strategy today. Security concerns can override alliance relationships. When fundamental advantages are threatened, even trusted partners represent unacceptable risks. Exclusivity carries significant costs. Protecting ultimate capabilities meant sacrificing revenue, straining partnerships, and potentially accelerating competitor innovation. Technological superiority requires constant evolution. Developing game-changing capabilities matters less than effectively leveraging them during their period of relevance. The Raptor transitioned from revolutionary breakthrough to aging exclusive asset over two decades. What represented insurmountable advantage gradually approaches technological parity as global capabilities advance. This dynamic plays out again today. The US is advancing the next generation air dominance, NGAD fighter, now designated F-47, with export plans still uncertain as of 2025. Meanwhile, allies are pursuing their own sixth-generation projects, including the Global Combat Air Program GCAP, formerly UK's Tempest and Japan's FX, with Italy, and the French-German-Spanish FCAS, direct responses to the Raptor lockout and to prevent another. The lesson is clear. When America hoards its best technology, allies will build their own. The question isn't whether this fragments Western air power. It's whether the US can maintain its edge while its closest partners develop competing systems. America faces identical choices with emerging capabilities, share future technologies, or maintain exclusive access. The F-22 experience demonstrates both approaches involve substantial risks and benefits. The next phase of air superiority development continues, with outcomes that will reshape global military balance and alliance structures for generations. The F-22's legacy, it's not just about air supremacy, it's about the price of perfection and whether America can afford to fly alone.